Have you tried running Google Ads and had fairly decent results, but you're just not quite sure which ad or which targeting produced the results? Well, that's something that plagues many people that advertise on Google, but know that it doesn't have to be that way. You have the ability to track your results and also have the ability to track your conversions every time that you're running a Google ad. So today we'll set up conversion tracking where we'll measure what's working and what isn't. Hey, it's Jaime. If we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. All right, so let's get started. We're here in my test account, ready to get some conversion tracking set up. So let's go to tools and settings, go to conversions, and you see right here, there's some demo uh, conversions already set up, but we're gonna create a brand new one. So let's pause for a quick second. I know I went a little bit fast there. So we went to tools, we went to conversions, and then we hit the plus sign. So right off the bat, what are we doing? We are tracking our conversions. We are tracking what is actually working. So let's just say you're running an ad and it's targeted to an audience of, uh, let's just call it audience A. And then you run another ad targeting audience B. And then you run another ad targeting audience C. So you have three audiences that you're targeting with your ad. Wouldn't it be beneficial to know if audience A converted 10 leads or sold 10 products versus audience B only selling two and then versus audience C selling a hundred. I mean, it could be that drastic. Wouldn't it be beneficial to have that type of information? Well, you can have that. It is absolutely possible. And that's what we're going to look at today where we are tracking the actual conversions that occur as a result of our ads. So you want to have that type of information because you may be having some success in advertising, but you don't necessarily know what was the secret recipe. You don't necessarily know what was the secret sauce that generated those results for you. So here you have the ability to track that. So I know we're about to get in a little bit of technical space, but don't worry. We're going to walk through this together. Hang in there. There's going to be a little bit of code that you have to copy and paste, but that's it. You don't need to know coding or anything like that. All right, so start tracking um, conversions. We're not going to go through that right now. So we're going to see, select the kind of conversions you want to track. So website conversions, online sales, link clicks, page views, and signups. So basically up here, it's more of a product sell or service sell if you have ser several services. And then signups, that's more like your leads, so lead generation. And you also have the ability to track app conversions. We're not gonna go through that today because not many of, the, not much of the audience that watches these videos has an app, so that wouldn't be the best use of our time. And then phone call conversations, calls from ads, so, you, so you're able to track that calls to a number on your website. So on your website, you're able to track which ones, which uh, the amount of calls that are being generated based off of the number on your website. So, so that is awesome to know. And then clicks on number on mobile sites. So that's more for your mobile advertising, but you're able to track those conversions, which actions resulted uh, were a direct result from your Google ads advertising and then import import data from Google Analytics, Salesforce, online lead conversions, and phone sales. So basically, if you have conversions set up in Google Analytics, you're able to import that in here and track it that way. So we're not gonna get into really any of these three right now because most of, most of the conversion that you're gonna be doing is gonna be over here in the website. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. All right, so let's click on there. Category, select the action you'd like to track. Purchase, add to cart, begin checkout, subscribe. So notice the different types of options that you have just from the sales category. And then the leads category, you have even more. Contact, submit, uh, submit, uh, submit lead form, book appointment, sign up, request quote, get directions, outbound click, and then some other categories. So you're able to categorize based off of that. All right, so for our example, we're gonna go with signups, people that actually uh, signed up to a program, whether they signed up and became a lead for us, whether they signed up for a service or for something that we were offering. So we're gonna go with sign up. 
Hey, one quick second, I'm gonna let you get right back to the video, but first I want to do my own type of conversion tracking. I wanna see if this video is resonating. So smash that like button if you wanna see more of these types of videos. And if you don't wanna see any more of these videos, then let me know down in the comment section down below which types of videos you do want to see. Name it something that you're going to remember because as you start building these conversions, it's gonna be very easy for you to not know what you created because you can create you can create one conversion at a time, but you're able to create a ton of other conversions. You can create a conversion based off of a click. You can, uh, well, you just read it right there, based off of a sign up, based off of um, really anything that you mean, uh, that anything that you want to track that's important to you. So make sure that you name it something that you're going to remember. So let's just say YouTube vid test conversion, all right? So that's gonna be the name of it. Okay, measure the impact of advertising by giving conversions a value. Use the same value for each conversion. Use different values for each conversion. Don't use a value for this uh, conversion action, not recommended. Regardless if I know what the value of the conversion is going to be, I typically go with use the same value for each conversion. And most of the conversions that I do for my clients and for my business is through um, is through leads, so real estate lead generation. So I just put $1, just for the sake of having something in there. If you have more information about your business, meaning if you know that for every lead that you generate, you're able to produce $10, uh, $200, $1,000, whatever that is, then make sure you put that there. But if you have um, a product or service and you know the exact amount, then go ahead and put that there as well. But um, I actually take them at their word here not use to not use a value for the conversion action that's not recommended. I um I take them at their word. I actually don't use that option. Count how many conversions to count per click or interaction. So every recommended for purchases because every purchase is valuable. Makes sense. If you're selling products and they order three, well you have three sales and you want to count every single one of them. Now, one, that's where we're gonna go today, recommended for leads, signups, and other conversions because only the first interaction is valuable. So what this means is if somebody submits their contact information once, well, that's the same value as if they submitted their information another time and another time and another time and another time. So one lead is one lead, regardless of if they gave you their contact information four times. All right, so we're gonna go with one. And then the click-through conversion, you're gonna, we're gonna click through, you can adjust that, but leaving it 30 days is perfectly fine. View through conversion window, again, you can adjust that, but leaving it one is com uh, is perfectly fine as well. Including conversions, so yes. And then attribution model, basically, I'm, I'm clicking through so you see the options, but leaving them the way that they are, they are set up perfectly for what you're going to need. So we're going to create and continue. All right, so here's where we get to the coding. Now, don't <laughs> click away. Don't uh, don't get intimidated. This is very super simple. All right, so if you have the Google, if you use Google Tag Manager, then you would click there and do your business. I actually don't use Google Tag Manager all that much. So um if you use it religiously, then there you go. You can you can um set your Google Tag Manager, set up the conversion through there. But I don't use it as much, so if you do it, great. Email the tag, email the tag to your webmaster. A lot of you have IT folks, a lot of you have webmasters, a lot of you have somebody that helps you out from a technical level, so from the online level. If you have that person, if you're fortunate enough to have that in your world, give them a huge thank you, because that is very valuable. And also email them the tag and ask them, hey, can you install this in my, um, in my website? and they'll know what to do. They've done this most, they should have done this. Most of them know what to do with this. Most of them know what to do with um, the Facebook ad pixel and all that fun stuff. So this isn't new to them. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna install this tag ourselves. Again, let's take a step back. We are trying to track the conversion. So if we're on Google ads, if we're advertising Google, I'm sorry, if we're advertising on Google, chances are that we're driving traffic to a website or driving traffic to a landing page or somewhere where we're going to ask them to give us their contact information. 
Okay, so that's the end. Of, that's that's the end goal. We want somebody's contact information. We want them to sign up or become a lead for us. So if we were doing the same, if we were running YouTube ads, it would be the same thing. So note that Google Ads um, has it gives you the ability to advertise on Google and on YouTube because they're basically the same the same company. So regardless if you have YouTube ads, you can create conversions. Regardless if you have Google ads, you can create conversions. So let's install the tags ourselves. All right, so this gives us the instructions and then the name of what um, of what we named our conversion over there. All right, so this is the important part. The global site tag adds visitors to your basic remarketing list and sets new cookies on your domain, which will store information about the ad click that brought a user to your website. You must install this tag on every page of your website. The global site tag isn't installed on your HTML, so that's your first option. That's the one that we're gonna go with. Then, then you have others, um, others that we're not gonna take the time to read, but I'll give you some time to read it yourself. Basically, if you have never installed the global site tag, that's the option that you're going to select. And that's the one that we're gonna select today. And I'm gonna show you where you're gonna place this code on your website. Now we're gonna go with um, a landing page generator for now, but I kind of glossed over, so I need to reiterate something. The global site tag adds visitors to your basic remarketing list. Let's put this into focus. We were talking about conversions, and that is fantastic. We want to be able to measure which um, which uh, which of our ads are actually producing conversions, and that's fantastic. That's the end goal. However, a byproduct of that, of what we're doing right now, it gives us the ability of putting this global site tag. So think of it like your Facebook pixel, if you're familiar with Facebook advertising. You're placing that on your website, on your landing page, so as to be able to retarget anybody that hits that website. So you're able to do that as well. And that is super powerful. All right, um, so we're gonna click copy right here. So copy the tag below and paste in between the header, blank, blank, tags of every page of your website. You only need to install the global site tag once per account, even if you're tracking multiple actions. So that is self-explanatory, nothing I could add to that. So we're gonna go to ClickFunnels. If you have ClickFunnels, fantastic. This is um, this is a very fortuitous uh, tutorial for you. If you have Squarespace, then um, I'm not sure if I have a video on, on Squarespace because I don't use Squarespace anymore, but um, but we're gonna use uh, this uh, ClickFunnels. If you have lead pages, if you have Instapage, if you have WordPress, WordPress, it works almost the same way. Now, you can also go to their help section and get directions on how to set up the Google Ads conversion. So just type that in Google Ads conversion and it's gonna give you the steps to take to be able to put this code. Basically, that's the only thing that you need. You need to know where you're gonna put this code that I have already copied over here. You need to know where this is going to go on the website. So again, if you're using ClickFunnels, fantastic. You are gonna have the answer in one video. So we're gonna go to settings. And then we're gonna go to head tracking code. You can see the Facebook pixel that I have installed there. And you might even see a global site tag over here. There you go. So that's a global site tag that I installed in the past. So I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> so the global site tag for, um, for Google, so the G tag, that is set up. Now I just have to go down here and move myself for a quick second, save and update the settings. I have done that first step, which was telling us, hey, install the global site tag once per account, even if you are tracking multiple actions. Well, we've installed the global site tag. Now we need to now we need to give directions on what do we deem important. We deem important a sign up. So let's Let's move forward. Event snippet. The event snippet works with the global site tag to track actions that should be counted as conversions. So here, these were signups. So we're counting them as leads. These were people that signed up and became leads or signs uh, or signups that became um, uh, customers of ours in some capacity. Choose whether uh, choose whether to track conversions on a page load or click. This is very important. Add the snippet to the page as a customer reaches after completing a conversion. 
add the snippet to a page that has a button to link that you'd like to track for clicks. So you can do it either way, but I prefer to go with the page load. So in order for that to happen, I have to set up the landing page. So the landing page first, and then the thank you page. Now, if I wanted to just track the people that came to my to my website, then you could do just the, well, I'm going way off on a tangent. Let's, let's just see it visually. I'm gonna copy this real quick. Then I'm gonna go back to my sales funnel. So you can see here, this is a general opt-in page. This is right here. I think I'm offering a list of homes or whatever. So this is what they're met with as soon as they click on my ad. Hey, I promised something over here on my ad and this is me delivering it. This landing page right here. I just need your name, your email, and your phone number and we're good to go. That's my, that's my pitch. That's my promise to the client. So as soon as they give me their contact information, they are gonna receive the thank you page. So it's a two-step opt-in. It's a very simple sales funnel. It's a very simple uh, landing page setup. So again, the landing page, this is what I'm promising you. I just need your contact information. And the moment that they do that, they're gonna be directed to the thank you page. So once this thank you page fires up or that page loads up, that means that they gave me their contact information or else they wouldn't be here because they can't bypass that. They either give me their con their information and end up at the thank you page or they just X out and go on their way. So that, those are the options. So either give me their information or go away. All right, we're gonna edit the page. Then we're gonna go to settings. Then we're gonna go to tracking code. And I think I have an event right there. Yeah, I already have an event. So I'm gonna replace it with this, the test conversion, uh, conversion, uh, whoa, sorry, YouTube vid test conversion. So this is that code, the event code that we needed. So I'm gonna X out of that and then I would press save. So that's already been saved. Now I go back here. All right, make sure I don't miss anything. We're gonna go to next and then you're done. That's that simple. I, again, all you had to do was copy and paste. Don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be, but you do want to take action on this. You do want to measure what is actually converting in your campaigns. You may be doing fine one month and you may be experiencing a, a, you know, some great leads or some good sales or some good whatever using Google Ads, but if you're not tracking the next month, the next month that maybe you don't have such a good month, you're not gonna be able to know, hey, what was working, what isn't working anymore. So have this, um, be able to track your conversions because it's really important between actually making money with paid advertising and losing a lot of money with paid advertising. So now that we've gone through conversion tracking, you might be interested in learning how to actually launch a Google ad from beginning to end. So I'll leave a video right here that's gonna help you do that. Also, if you found value today, please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And of course, make it your best day yet.